I hug them and, and you're so far. No, no, stay. Oh, okay, good, all right, yay. Hi. I'm so happy. Okay, the panel's over. Everybody leave. Look out! <laughs> oh, Clark. There's two G's at the end of your name for a reason. Ah! I'm <laughs> 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 Poosh! <laughs> all right, so here we are at Nerd HQ, and you know how this goes. We're gonna get right into the questions because it's all about the fans. So put up your hands, take a microphone, stand when you ask your questions so the interwebs can see you, uh, and volunteers will bring you a mic. So uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna start with uh, her, and then we're gonna go to this guy. And this is gonna go great, you guys. She's got two microphones. No, okay, good, she doesn't, good. Uh, hi guys, first of all, I wanna say thank you all so much for being here. Um, I'm such a huge fan of all of you. You're all so wonderful. Um, but this is mainly uh, for Haley and for Chloe. Um, I just want to thank you uh, for your open acceptance of both Cartinelli and of Skimmins. Um, it means so much to the queer community um, that our ships aren't um, thrown aside and kind of seen as a joke. Um, so thank you for not taking them as a joke. Um, my question is kind of how do you think it would be possible? I know Kevin Fe uh, Feige, Feige, Feige. Feige. <laughs> um, said, you know, within the next 10 years, if it happens organically in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but do you think it could possibly, maybe not necessarily with, with the two of you, um, but maybe we have a, a hey queer now. character. <laughs> um, a queer character in the Marvel TV universe before we have one in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thank oh, you. I hope so, possibly. I think it's completely possible. You up for it, babe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this I'm is already the best panel ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more concerned with the time travel. I think that would be the harder part. Because uh -huh. I'm so down. Awful. Anything can happen. Yeah. If there's I anything it, that justifies the time travel. It's, it's our relationship. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I definitely think that's possible. I hope, I ho and I hope it happens. I mean, I'm the biggest, I'm the captain of the skimming ship. Obviously, because I'm obsessed with Elizabeth Hentridge, so, yeah. Awesome. Can, I, can I just say one thing, which is uh, one of the exciting things about having Inhumans come on to uh, the part of the story that we're telling, is that it represents people who evolve differently than what is considered normal up till that point, and then there are those people who think that that's a problem and they should be separated or exterminated, and there are those who think that that's an exciting new development in who we are. I feel like that's a, when our when comic book stuff and our show gets to start to be topical because that's what's happening in the world. So at a certain point, when that's our story, to not have different parts of the LGBT community represented within our team, it's going to be weird. So it needs to happen soon. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And that's not just because I have a crush on Ian DeCastecker. It's a, it's a real <laughs> lies. You guys and your crushes, oh my goodness. Stand up, please, so everyone can see your beautiful face. Oh, thank you, oh. Yep, Hi. not just um, saying you have a beautiful face, I want you to, okay, I, I it's working I, great. Yeah, thank you, yeah, the points don't matter. Um, you guys are awesome, by the way, thank you for doing this, thank you for your shows, and um, I know that with such uh, important stuff and themes and relationships that you have in the shows, there's gotta be some levity off camera. So in terms of pranks, none at all, Clark says. <laughs> in terms of pranks, what's the best one that's been done, and also, Will the Dub Smash War be a Comic-Con exclusive, or will that continue? That, that is not over, I that just want to say. That is not over, oh my goodness, you guys. You're if you're following that, down, what you saw time. last night from Haley was a reaction, and not a response, <laughs> just to clarify. I just don't know how you're gonna top that. Oh, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Those of you who missed it, the, the most recent salvo ended up with We Are the Champions from Queen, and the final image was Peggy Carter with the red lips and the red hat. So, bring it. <laughs> uh, well, maybe the lack of a response about the pranking means that no pranking goes on. on oh, uh, oh I, well, we prank each other quite a bit. And by we, we mean you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and by each other, we mean me. <laughs> yeah, we need to... Uh, Haley did hide in my trailer on Halloween for about half an hour waiting for me to show up and jump out and scare the shit out of me. Yeah. It, was very, it was a lovely reaction. You fell on the floor. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Military training. Somebody 
who might be on this panel might have filled Ian DeCastecker's trailer with snow <laughs> during a snow episode and then thought that she escaped retribution until she discovered that the many looks she'd been getting as she drove around town had to do with the perfect California vanity plate that said balls deep with a Z. <laughs> Genius. You guys, I was driving around town with balls deep as my license plate for like I must a look month. hot today. <laughs> and Everybody's waving to me. It was my front plate, so I didn't see it because I, I just would Can never. Can you please just send it to my house? Because I need to put it on my car. He got props department to make it, and it's like a full on it's legitimate genius. license plate that said balls deep. <laughs> and I didn't notice. <laughs> I still actually haven't gotten Ian back for that, so if we have any suggestions. God, I, I need, I'm coming over to your house to take it and put it on my car. It's so good. It's so funny on a girl's car. <laughs> Weirdly, no one had that plate. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's balls deep with a Z. It's not as funny as with an S. It is with a Z. Oh, God. <laughs> it is with a Z. It's balls. Which really made us know that Ian is adapting very well to American Just culture. Just so it's even more classy. <laughs> But also, Clark loves to. We I, we were doing a scene. I think it was in the blooper reel. If anyone's, I think we need to share this one. Yes, Why? we do. Well, Clark, we, I, we were doing a scene, and I was supposed to be like having a nightmare and having kind of an intense moment, and I'm waking up from a nightmare, and um, I woke up, and I'm in. Clark is supposed to be just gently like waking me up like a father, and instead he was wearing like murder clown mask, <laughs> and <laughs> scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> It was good. We got was, it on the blooper reel, though. I the work. He's like, Sky, Sky, puts it on really quick. <laughs> and I screamed and, like, fell off the chair. It was good. That's nice. So no fun. <laughs> okay, the guy on the aisle, and then the lady with a hand attached to her body. Oh, it's, yeah. oh, it's a woman on an aisle. The first, the, that person, I couldn't see your face. Sorry about that. Hello. It's a lovely, beautiful lady. My name is Lauren. I'm from the Peggy Carter podcast. So, Haley and James, it's so awesome to see you guys. Woo! So my question is, would you guys do a dubstep in front of us to Taylor Swift's Bad Blood? At the dub smash? The dub smash. Right now? Yeah. Should we, okay, wait, I have a question. Should it be them doing one and us doing one and we, we do them at the same time to see who's better? Or a f you want to force some dub smash? Well, it will be like, worse because I don't even know the song. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be now worse on this side. That one. How's it go? Uh, well, I do, if anyone... DJ, can, uh, hit it! Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, because this no is going to take up the rest That's of the panel. This will take the rest. No, well, yeah. They took, <laughs> by the way, they took 15 takes to do that thing last yeah, night. Yeah, um, he was listening. One no, take. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. One, one take. take. Oh. And 14 rehearsals. rehearsals. <laughs> <New> rehearsals. <laughs> It's just because my 14 lipstick. rehearsals, and then they all fell about laughing at how brilliant they were after oh. each one. We would. Oh my God, your timing is amazing. You're so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> we really were. We really were. Oh my Clark's God! timing was amazing. We didn't listen to a lot of congratulating about the interesting framing on the Oompa Loompa thing where you came in from this. <laughs> well, the well, bit that did, the bit that you unfortunately didn't get to see was being in the bus as we were going somewhere last night and then trying to upload it onto the internet, and they discovered that they couldn't, and there was no chance they were ever going to be able to recreate it. And so they, both of them, with sweat pouring down their face. And I'm going, can't get it online, guys. That's a shame. It's so good. Oh, no. Crushed. We did. We lost it for, like, because it didn't. We you have no dub smashes. Yeah. I was in tears. I was sobbing. We were stressed out. I couldn't, like, focus. We were going to the red carpet, and I just didn't care about anything besides the dub smash. Um, maybe we can do one at the end. Should we? Maybe we should do one, the four of us, backstage, and then we can we can kind of load it up uh, after the panel, yeah. so we don't take up too much. You time. really don't want it. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do bad everything blood. for you if you see us try to make a dub smash. Oh. There's nothing more <laughs> embarrassing than watching someone make a dub smash. It's so and talking about dub smash, yeah. it's got to be let's, the most let's interesting be finished thing about that ever happened. And like half Monica. the room right now is googling the word dub smash because they have no idea. Actually, I think Luke did watch us making a dub smash and put it online, didn't he? Yeah, he's he's in the foreground and he's just and we're in the background trying to do our um, B-52s Love Shack, and uh, and then you just see, but you see Luke's face going, uh, <laughs> and he's so proud of himself, and we're just <laughs> <laughs> okay. That happened. A non-dub smash question. 
Uh, yeah, this is, yes, beautiful. Is the mic on? Oh, there we go. Hello, I have major convoys too, so uh, this is gonna sound really weird, but um, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, I love Agent Carter so much, and I love Peggy Carter, and I love the way you portray her, so she's like one of my favorite characters ever on like any TV show, and I think she's a superhero that Marvel really deserves, and she's like awesome. Thank really you, wow. Um, and <laughs> Hold on, let's stop on that. <laughs> And, uh, well, this question is for uh, Clark and Haley, and uh, you guys uh, uh, play, sorry, really nervous. Uh, you guys You're doing great, you're doing great. On the movie, like in the movies as well as on TV shows, and I was just wondering if like your approach to your character changed at all when you like made the transition from the big screen to the small screen, and if like, I know it's kind of a time difference too, because that affects it, but did, it, did the way you like come at your character and like get in the mindset of your character change when you went from the movies to the TV shows? Haley? Uh, yeah, okay. Hi. Um, it, it did in the sense that she didn't get much time on screen in the first Avenger movie. And the, the big thing, we, it was a great collaboration with Marvel when we started thinking about making a show because I got to sit in the writer's room and sit with the producers and already discuss what we wanted to talk about. And my main thing was we'd seen this strong, capable woman and, uh, you know, who kicks ass. And I just, I felt that wasn't enough because there must be a psychological and emotional cost to having to be that every day, all the time. And I felt like I wanted to make her a lot more relatable, and so I wanted to show her vulnerability and, the, and what it really truly meant to grieve the love of her life and to be stuck in this male-dominated world where she's working twice as hard to get half as far as the guys. Um, and that gave, for me, that gave the character nuance and depth and something the writers jumped on board with and, and really explored in the script. So it just gave me so much more to get my teeth into, really. Yeah. Clark. Thanks, so. um, in brief, similar. Uh, Coulson was a guy who kind of showed up to wrangle diva superheroes <laughs> in various films and to kind of do the bidding as a kind of obedient company man who'd seen a little too much. Um, and suddenly, he and I were awake after a, a very close call in the Avengers and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, commanding a small rapid response team in the ever-changing world post-Avengers. And, uh, and suddenly he, he and I both found out this is more complicated than I thought. I, he was, you know, and I felt like a, a walking dead, essentially. And uh, with a great team and, and uh, being, exploring what it means to be that person on a much deeper level, you know, than, than almost anybody's gotten to do, uh, which was really exciting. And I had this mirror experience of having a team, including someone like Chloe Bennett, who I had to learn very quickly to work with under intense pressure and to come to care about very, very much. And it's been one of the great joys of my life to actually kind of evolve this show and to kind of be the first one through the door in terms of Marvel television trying to tell these stories and tell the different parts of the one big story that Marvel's telling in this world. And uh, I guess the only other thing I would say is that the funnest part about it is it's, it's deepened our connection with the fans and made our, our weekends here in San Diego one of the funnest things anyone has ever experienced. <laughs> and then you got the dub smash. <laughs> okay, um, let's just let's, 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 uh, do some cleanup in the back there. There's a guy on the aisle over there with his hand up and then we'll go to the woman in the Yes, I got your gender right, the woman in the back. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want to say thank you. I'm, I'm the father of three daughters, and uh, we love watching Agent Carter together. Uh, and Haley, it's great that you're showing a strong, independent woman um, who can also connect with the people around her. And I also appreciate Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because of the relationship that Agent Coulson and Sky slash Daisy have and um, the Marvel television for us has become a family event and it's just so wonderful with all the things out there that we can't watch together that these two shows are things that we can and we absolutely love it so thank you oh thank you well that can was I, heartfelt can I say, and adorable can I say something to yeah. that? Um, like Clark was saying one of the most extraordinary things about this whole process is being able to engage with the fans and I've been going to a lot of conventions in the last few weeks, and there were two stories I just wanted to share with you. The first one was 
a lady in the Middle East came up to me and she was, she was crying and she just said, can you write on the photograph that women can be heroes too? I just felt so humbled by that and just thinking that it's this incredible byproduct of, of doing a show that we all love, that we all have a great time doing and it's our job, but that it can extend outwards and connect with people on a very human level. And so it just, it gave, it was very humbling, gave my work more meaning. And then there's this other lady who'd had an accident like 10 years ago and she was in a wheelchair and she asked me to sign her leg and she got it tattooed and showed me the next day. And she also had tattoos of other strong independent women on her legs. And she said it was her way of, in her words, claiming back her broken body. And uh, the, I mean, it was, you know, that's, that to me just takes my, the meaning of my work up to a whole new level. And so being able to engage with fans and seeing the effects that it has on them just is, um, you know, has changed my life. So thank you guys too. My question is actually a really great follow on from that because it's specifically about identity and especially Sky's identity because we learnt yesterday on the Marvel panel that she is now going to be going by Daisy when it comes back to the next season. So how do you think it's going to transition because Sky was a name that she chose for herself and chose that identity going forward. So how is that, gonna, how is that transition going to work when she now starts going by Daisy in the next season? I feel like Sky was an identity that she was kind of, it was, I don't think she was ever fully comfortable in it. I feel like she was, she was searching the whole time. I mean, her whole, every, everything she did in her life was to try to find out about her, uh, about her parents and her family and learn more about who she is and where she came from. And she did in season two and uh, as fucked up as it was, <laughs> um, and as, you know, as, intense the reunion with her parents ended up to be I, I think there was a part of her now she was obviously her mom did try to kill her which was not great Dude. Um, <laughs> but she has this kind of weirdly odd beautiful relationship with cal um and in my mind that's kind of her changing her name is kind of a nod to him because he did save her life and um i think her searching is now over and it's kind of she's she's turning a new chapter and she's gonna um I'm, you know, I guess start to search for the secret warriors. Yeah. Um. All right, uh, on the aisle in the back and then we'll go to this woman back here in the back as well. Hello. Um, so all of you. Uh, Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are the knights who say nee. <laughs> all right, some of you will, some will explain to the younger ones. Okay. Now I'm thoroughly embarrassed for the rest of the day. Okay. Um, no, we love a good hello. Ooh. We start our day that way. Elizabeth is like that. Hello. It's great. Sorry. Continue. Okay. Um, Sorry. Our bad. So all of you um, have inspired uh, many of us in this room and so many people outside of this room as well. Um, who are some people that inspire you? James. I... <laughs> Really? Sorry. I inspire you? No, That's no. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud to <laughs> Would you like me to sign your leg? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny, I, uh, I am, I don't really read newspapers very often because I find what I read in it to be deeply affecting and usually pretty negative. Uh, and maybe it is an age thing, I don't know. But I am oddly inspired by small acts of kindness that will never be reported in a newspaper. Mm. So I see somebody helping somebody across the street or something, and I find myself almost moved to tears by that, because that's, that's not someone who's gonna win an award for doing that. Uh, I, I see people doing things that, that go unnoticed. And not all the time, most of the time I miss it, but when my eyes are open and I manage to catch it, those are the moments that really floor me. I think that is 98% of what the world looks like. And uh, I feel like I read the 2% all the time, and it's very frightening, the 2%. Uh, so, 
I, it's not a brilliant answer because I have no name and nobody who, who, who we, we, we globally recognize to give us an answer. But, but that would be my answer in terms of inspiration is, is the, uh, every time I see somebody do something that is genuinely beautiful and human, I feel inspired by that. Anybody else want to attack that question, or are we all intimidated by? I'm a little intim that so was intimidated. That was so intimidated. Yeah, <laughs> James kind of dialed it. He really dialed did. it in. He, he really dialed, dialed it in. in. Really. I, I have to. Then I have to say, I have found the last three weeks in the national media incredibly painful and inspiring, but the congregation in Charleston and the way they reacted to that hatred, and the way that the nation kind of rallied around that part of that issue and the passage of the marriage equality bill and some of the policies that are going on that just make it feel like we're part of a more compassionate, open nation has been really made me feel good about living here. Mm. I always do, but really better lately. Yeah. Taylor Swift. She's pretty awesome, right, guys? Anybody, guys? I'm sorry, I brought that down. Can we <laughs> dub no, smash? That was <laughs> that was awesome. That was that was a great answer. Um, all right, let's see. Let's keep going. Um, you look so exciting to me. You and then her, <laughs> and then we'll come about. Huh? It's a him. Oh, I just see your amazing hair, and I thought you were dressed like Pam from my show, which is how self-centered I am. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, um, my question is for Chloe. Um, Sky is my favorite character in the entire Marvel Universe, and I think she, you play her so well. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Stop on hi. that for a second. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question was, how did you approach the physicality of your powers in the second, se the second half of the season and, and make it look real? Because that's clearly not happening in front of you. No, it is. That's the only reason they cast me. <laughs> I have earthquake powers. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to be completely honest, my approach was what looks less dumb? And I'm not even kidding, because nothing feels more stupid than this. <laughs> and then, like, having to take that completely serious and be really torn up about it and really, you know, because her transition, she was in denial about it for, a, you know, for quite some time, and she really genuinely did not want it. And, and didn't want to be have any part of it. And, um, and uh, it, so it, basically it was just what looks less dumb, to be honest. Um, I, we, I talked with Marissa and Jed and I was like, you know, we, we looked at the comics and we wanted to kind of get the mannerisms down that she, they've drawn uh, for her, but uh, really just kind of. We have a guy. <laughs> named Mark Kolpak. I love Mark. you know who that is. He's our visual effects guy. I don't believe anybody's ever done this amount of visual effects in this amount of time, 22 times in a season, and he's just up the game every episode. But a lot of times you're stuck there doing, you know, what Chloe just did, or in my case yeah. in season one, holding a kind of standard theater light, which had been charged up to shoot out super powerful beams. Yeah. Either way, that's not going to happen till later. <laughs> so I'm standing there in this theater at 2 in the morning holding a theater light like, come on, Colpac baby, come on. <laughs> Hook me up later. And so often you see it and you go, oh, thank God. Yeah, well, you don't see it. So like for the mid-season finale, I don't know if you guys saw, but it's that big, it's the reveal. And I have that weird L'Oreal commercial moment where I flip my hair <laughs> and BJ. The uh, boobs of destiny? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but for that shot, um, I had, they used a special camera and I only had 15 seconds. So this is what they told me on set. They say, okay, so you're gonna stand here. Um, BJ just died. So look at him and get emotional. And then look back at Raina and she's an inhuman now. So get emotional back like that. And then look back at BJ and then cry. And then, <laughs> and then quake off the, the rock from your body. But you only have 15 seconds. So you have to do it all really fast. <laughs> and literally that's what they said. So it took like nine takes and I think we finally got it because we had to like, and I was looking at pieces of tape. 
So really what I was crying out None was of the, them were there. No one was there. It was me and it was three pieces of tape. They had a picture of Sonic Hedgehog though yeah, for yeah. where Raina was. Too. <laughs> how, about the, how about the 40s of it all? I mean, you guys are kind of in an entirely different time period and world and I can't imagine that's not happening in downtown LA with Ubers going by. <laughs> Uh, we did have a big explosion in the second episode that I had no idea what was going on when we were shooting it. Uh, Joe Russo was shooting that episode and he, he was keen, mainly his, his direction seemed to re revolve around getting out of there early. <laughs> he doesn't like to work nights. So it was, it, the direction kind of went, okay, see the green screen? So that's gonna happen, you just duck. And the script had changed quite a lot because the first time we had read it, it was brilliant, but it needed four weeks to shoot and $35 million. Uh, so the script had sort of gone through 85 changes up until that point. And I'll be honest, they hadn't entirely read all of the last ones. So in the end, you kind of went, where's the camera? It's there. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to be facing this way, just on the back of my head. I'm going to duck that way so you don't have to look like too much of an idiot. Oh my God, a huge explosion. <laughs> have, I, have I said too much? I've overshared. It's a strong move. I'm, you we'll don't want to know that. how the we'll sausages are made. <laughs> It's funny to you, but if you're an actor, it's so funny that I'm gonna laugh about it like tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, uh, right there. The person, the, the 50th person whose gender I've gotten wrong today. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Um, hi. Um, so my question is specifically for Clark, and I wanted to know, um, how does it feel to be a, like, a large part of the Marvel Universe and be in the comics and in all the little everything or talked about and everything and having people cosplay you and do art of you. How does that feel personally to you? You know. Let's take a minute. I, I can't even. You guys, this isn't weird at all. This isn't weird at all. I'd like to be cool. <laughs> I have always wanted to be cool, but it's, I'm, it's getting along now and it hasn't happened. Um, my mother sent me some notebooks of mine because she was sick of storing them in her garage, especially because I was past 50. And, um, <laughs> and I, there was one that said algebra on the front. And I was like, I don't know any algebra. I wonder what's in here. It was nothing but me trying to draw like Jim Starlin's warlock and a whole like my own edition of Iron Fist. And, uh, so, you know, it wasn't something I necessarily kept up with to the level of real ballers that I've met here. Um, but I, I loved it so much that when they called and said, we've got a couple of lines in Iron Man. He doesn't have a name, it's Agent. Uh, I was like, in, 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 in. And uh, I, I still haven't really come up with a suitable gift for Jon Favreau, because I don't, haven't earned enough money yet. Um, <laughs> but honestly, the whole thing has just been, are you kidding me? really amazing and it's it's also I feel really fortunate about it because I I I feel like as we were talking about earlier in the world of alternate reality sci-fi fantasy there's a different slightly askew prism through which you can look at the world and project us forward that's always been really powerful to me and I love the fact that it seems to be spreading that love and to see the way the stories matter to people and to have Phil Coulson be somebody that people know is just a really big deal to me. So thank you. I really thank you because if it wasn't for most of the people in this room doing hashtag Coulson Lives, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. So thank you. Can I, can I say something that goes back to the question of who inspires me? It 100% is Clark Gregg. You guys have no idea. He is, not only is he the director in S.H.I.E.L.D., but he's truly the leader on set and he's so kind. No, he's so kind and he cares about everyone so deeply on set and he's so sweet and he has been so good to me throughout the whole, I could cry. He's been so good to me throughout the whole series. I mean, really like we have that bond on and off screen. I think you can see it on camera, but he has really taken me under his wig and he cares about everyone, all of you so deeply and everyone on set and he's just, attitude reflects leadership and he is our leader and we love him. So good part.
Okay. I need James to make fun of me now, to bring it back just a little bit. He's always really good about that. C double G, y'all. Oh, no, he's gonna do oh. me. Yeah, the, wait a minute, did the camera get that? One more time, I think we need the camera to get that for the people at home. Straight ahead. I will have one of Straight those ahead, in my James. suitcase yes. by the time I leave the pod. There we go. All right, um, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Uh, uh, well, we've done the back of the room, so let's come up, let's come about th this guy right here. He has a beard. I, I feel like I got his gender right. You did, you did. I'm an it idiot. Close call, but you're Okay. <laughs> um, so, mostly for Clark Gregg. Um, it looks like a lot of people are gonna get killed off in the coming Avengers movies, and they've done a real good job separating- Spoiler alert. <laughs> Separating um, your character from the cinematic universe just so they don't have to explain, by the way, he's alive. Um, but since... I mean, they have. But I don't know if you saw Ultron. Where'd that helicarrier come from? Yeah, and they just opted not to explain it. <laughs> I'm embezzling to build what? No. It was in Sam Jackson's garage. <laughs> Actually, Sam has one in his garage. Sorry, go ahead. So, with basically every character ever coming back for Avengers 2, or the second part of Avengers 3, what are the chances that you come back and just, you know, just deadpan and be like, hey guys? I think that's one of the good ways to do it. I mean, I feel like this is a good place to announce that Marvel doesn't tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was horrible. That was super aggressive Comic-Con behavior. <laughs> Passive aggressive. Um, the membrane between myself and Phil Coulson gets more and more porous as, as every minute goes by. And both of us really would like to explain we didn't con anybody. We really thought, you know, it was a close call. Um, but I, you know, I think the great thing about Marvel is it is this giant story and they're, they always seem to, if there's a possibility for something that the fans want or for something that's got a huge payoff, they don't leave that on the table. So I think when the time is right, at some point, I think that payoff will show up. In the meantime, I'm having an awfully good time with this amazing team that we've put together and we got some secret warriors to look for. All right, guys, we are out of time. Please give it up for the partners in prime time from Marvel. Hey, yeah, well, James Darcy, Cohen Bennett, and Clark Gregg. Double G!